Hey yo, welcome to Blood Bath and Beyond. Today we're flipping the script and we're hitting the streets and we're reviewing Urban Massacre. This movie is written and directed by Dale Rustini, starring Lala Anthony, Guru, and fuck it. And who else we got? We got Baby Sham, Capone, Sita, D-Don, Dia, G-Flex, Crumb, Crumb Snatcher. You know my boy Crumb Remedy. Snatcher. Urban <laughs> Massacre is about a rap group called <laughs> Supernaturals who just want to be stars. They don't want any of that fucking game bullshit, but this motherfucking clown is just killing everybody they know, and they just want to find out who the fuck it is. You're pretty fucking gangster. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> You're the white Noriega. So what did we like? I really liked the rap songs and the rap performances. I thought, like, the rap lyrics and the songs were very solid. To the extreme, the strength of team wanted I gleam, got plaques over my bed post, look at my scene. I was a big fan of Guru being in this because Guru, R.I.P., one of my favorite rappers, really loves seeing Seeing him in a cameo, and I bet that this was probably the last film he's ever been in. It's a shame, kind of, but I did like seeing him. I really enjoyed Jamal. He was dropping those horror facts the entire time. You remember Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho? So that was the first time they ever had the toilet on the screen for real. So let's explain this story a little bit more. <laughs> Essentially, it's just a rap group that is trying to get signed the entire movie. And they just keep <laughs> running around performing rap songs, trying to get signed. And a clown keeps killing them. Not even no. the rap members. Other people affiliated with them. The Supernaturals continue to just kind of go along with their business trying to be rap stars. And they didn't really need to be in this movie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, they're yeah. more or less there, like, in between the kills to, like, fill in space. We want to sign the Supernaturals. All right, this clown is going to go kill whoever's going to sign them. <laughs> like, that's what it was. It's a cutthroat business. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe he, maybe he's the spirit of, like, protecting them. This is what's holding them down, man. The, the man that's holding them down is the clown, man. <laughs> They want to keep it in the underground. So what didn't we like? I also didn't like the rap performances. There were not few and far between. There were many all over the place. <laughs> and they were very long. They were like six to eight minutes. And if you've ever been to a rap concert, people just keep jumping on stage and they want to perform. And that's what happened here. The editing during the concert shots was just fucking atrocious. For how much this movie was pretty chaotic, I really wish there was some concrete scenes where it wasn't over the top. It was almost every time someone spoke, they needed to be heard and they needed to just like be really like obnoxious or like really flamboyant. And it didn't always need to be that way. It was everyone's like, I need to be in the spotlight. I am this. I am the guy <laughs> or girl. That's how the rap game goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were trying to give us so much information about each character and they did so by like still shot typewriter, let's type in the information, but they only put it on for maybe about like 10 frames. So they've got like this huge paragraph of like all backstory on a character. So this is Jamal, he's d d cut. And like we've got a whole <laughs> paragraph to read and we don't even get to it. It honestly seemed just like this could have been like the storyline for a Def Jam video game. I need to get signed, I need to get my way to the top so I can be the best rap star ever. Oh, also there's a clown that kills some people. Yeah, it was like people would show up at the beginning of the movie and then several scenes later they would die and you're like, oh, like, who's that person again? Or it'd be like we'd see them for the first time and then they would die. They had lots of deaths. Nothing that could be seen, nothing could be shown. I absolutely hated this clown. There was nothing entertaining about him. I actually thought it was nice that it was a mask, because most clowns we see are in like <laughs> makeup. I love the like white with the polka dots. I, don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. Says the guy who also <laughs> loved the fucking pumpkin, pumpkin guy from yeah. Night of the is, Pumpkin. All you do is love like killer's costumes. Some of them the are awesome. Guys. Ever. The camera work was probably some of the worst that we've seen. It's basically just the guy who had a handy cam just fucking holding it loosely in his hands <laughs> and walking around bumping into people. They made a lot of amateur mistakes with their sound and their lighting. Like we saw mics in the shot. There was one scene <laughs> where they're all in a, in a van and it's your typical like lights kind of flying by to show that they're actually moving. In the hood you can see the reflection of a guy with a light just like <laughs> <laughs> you hit me in the head. <laughs> we actually did not have an ending. We don't see who the killer is. It seems like they may have released this pretty early on and then re-recorded an ending with just one of the guys saying, Hey guys, sorry, uh, we know we didn't shoot an ending, so the real killer is this guy's twin. And just point to 
the pizza guy. Literally, it's Scooby Doo. They, yeah. they capture the guy, hold his mask, and like, we gotta figure out who you are. And then they break the fourth wall by looking at the camera and go, find out next time. What? what? Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Urban Massacre was a shit movie. Everything was just really, really bad. The acting was not acting. The camera work was garbage. And I'm not gonna get into the story because it was terrible. Even if I was into the story, they interrupted it with like eight minute songs that were terribly edited. I wanted to watch this for so long and it let me down big time. I'll give this 0.5 O oh faces out of five. I also thought this movie was garbage. I thought it could have been a lot smoother and I thought everyone didn't need to be in the spotlight and it could have been a lot better if they would have decided on characters and gave them their place. Some of the scenes were good, but it kind of fell apart in the end. It was just two movies trying to be one and it just didn't work. So with that said, I'm gonna have to give this half a douchebag in a turtleneck hanging out at a rap concert out of five. When we found this DVD, I thought it was gonna be a hidden gem. It was advertising they had four tracks for us to spit on on the back of the cover. And I was like, man, if we do this, we can make a music video, we can have some extra content, we can have fun with this. And it was a complete letdown. The jokes fell flat, the kills, they sucked because they weren't on screen, and our killer sucked, and the story sucked. So that being said, I'm gonna give this 0.5 clotheslines from hell out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and let us know your favorite rap-inspired horror movie in the comments below. I'm going lap in the hood. It's probably the only horror one I know. It's You're going Tales from the Hood all that? I'm probably going to go Tales from the Hood. I do love Tales from the Hood. Let us know more, because we, we like this genre. Except this is shit. And if you want to see a rap video coming from us about this movie or some other topics on a beat from this movie, Make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with that cool rap video. Also, what would you do? And other horror film reviews. Son?